Are you one of the millions of people around the world who have been diagnosed with lupus, a life-threatening autoimmune disease? Is part of your lupus where you have a rash on the skin, a lupus rash? Have you tried different ointments and immunosuppressive medications that haven't helped you reduce the rash? Do you go out in the sun and the rash gets worse from the sun exposure? You deserve to see this video right here where this woman had a horrible rash on her skin and you also can see how her rash is gone. Now this woman, under my care, she um, was diagnosed with lupus 15 years ago. This is September of 2019. 15 years ago she was uh, diagnosed with lupus and the doctors had given her uh, two kinds of immune suppressant medications, Plaquenil and Celsept, and they gave her prednisone and ibuprofen. And what happened to her was the immune suppressant medications caused ulcers in her stomach. And the doctors told her when she had been vomiting and diarrhea for four days when she went to the hospital, and they did a study on her, they found that she had ulcers, they said there was infection in there, and they knew it was caused by the immune suppressant medications. So understand, when you take something to suppress the immune system, infections can grow in the body. She had to get off of those medications she chose to. They told her it's okay to get off the medications. Uh, with a warning, of course, because she's got lupus. But when she got off the medications, the medications never made her feel better with her joint pain, and they did not make her feel worse. They did not make her better with her skin. They did not make her feel worse. Now, uh, in my background, uh, part of my studies and my postgraduate studies is about neuroimmunology. And one of the world's most recognized immunologists who taught us in this class, he revealed to us laboratory uh, scientific uh, studies from around the world of, of the scientists who were doing studies on the body of autoimmune disease, where they found that it's not what the drug companies are saying, that there is the immune system is just attacking the body and they don't know why. They found in every single tissue, there were infections in the tissues, different viruses and bacteria and or fungus and parasites and mold can be in these tissues or do get in these tissues and cause the inflammation. And the immune system is now attacking the tissues where these infections exist. So I follow the, the premise of it's infections and or toxins in the body that are making this happen to the body. And I practice a very unique, safe and effective strategy method that can actually help us find the exact infections and produce the results for you like what she's experiencing. The rash is gone without extra medication. Watch the video, I'll put that link underneath this video. Watch the video of her complete description of, uh, of her just saying exactly what I just told you and even more. Now I'll tell you that the rash came out because I believed her joint pain in her whole body that was with her lupus, that it was coming from infections in her tissues. And I found on an examination in December of 16 that in the stem cells, the cells in the bone marrow that makes the blood, where the blood is made in the bone marrow, you have what's called hematopoietic stem cells in the blood that make your blood. Those stem cells were infected, seriously infected, many infections in her stem cells. And when she was, and when we practice a true healing, true healing, which means getting rid of the organisms in the body, getting them out of the body. Get those organisms out so the body can heal and feel better. When she took the remedies to get rid of these infections that I'll tell you about in a few minutes, it came out of the body through the skin and it made the rash appear. Now understand this. Think about this for a minute. If you listen to, if you watch a movie where there's a volcano eruption, we look at that movie of that video where we're not right by the volcano and we see this eruption it's wow that's incredible look at that mother nature at its finest but if you're sitting at the base of that volcano and there's boulders and 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 dust and and lava and you can be seriously injured or die you don't want to be there but when we're close to the volcano it's dangerous when we're from afar we look at the beauty of the earth doing its own function of its healing because it had to release pressure from the inside that's what a volcano eruption is pressure built up the earth lets it out that way through that mountaintop through the volcano top blows off and now we have all this come out and we're forming new earth well we're helping your body heal by her body getting rid of the infections that were in the body that made the body so ill, causing this lupus in the first place. So the body got rid of it through the skin. That's how healing worked for her. I found in her stem cells that she had mercury, she had parasitic eggs, she had parasites, she had ringworm, she had streptococcus bacteria, she had anaplasma bacteria, she had Lyme infection, she had staph infection in those stem cells. I also found 
that she had some mold in those stem cells and that's what started coming out of her in that skin rash. The next time I saw her after that December visit that was in March of 2017, I found more in her stem cells. She had scabies infection, salmonella bacteria, she had E. coli bacteria, she had uh, Shigella bacteria, Legionella bacteria, she had a bacteria called Peptostreptococcus, Treponema bacteria, and she had Streptococcus aureus bacteria. She had urea plasma bacteria in her stem cells, kept coming out through the skin. Her stem cells also had a parasite from the malarial infection, and she had Bartonella hensile, known as cat scratch fever. Those were in her stem cells. I found that the fascia, the tissue underneath the skin, she had several bacteria as well. Now remedies were given to her to take care of these infections and the body kept getting rid of it through the skin for her. Some people, when they're gonna get rid of the infection in true healing, the aggravation that occurred for her, while it was very difficult for her, she's on the other side of it now. She's feeling better with no medical assistance. There was no immunosuppressive medications. As she tells you in the video, she took a cream that they prescribed for her, it didn't help. The body was getting rid of these organisms through her skin. Some people will evacuate it through their stool or some people throw it up or some people will sweat it out and burn it off sometimes through the urinary tract infections come out. But she also had in her fascia, she had several bacteria. Her spleen was infected with several bacteria. And I found on her skin that she had salmonella bacteria and scabies infection. She took all these remedies to get rid of the infections through her stem cells that were in her stem cells and the fascia and the spleen and the, and the stomach and the skin. And it still kept expressing through the skin. Now, I saw her again. Uh, this was about nine months later in December of 17. And I found that her skin, her skin had several infections. She had staph infection in the skin. She had some streptococcus bacteria. We gave her remedies for those and gave her some remedies that to strengthen the lymphatic system and strengthen the immune system. She came back, her skin was still purple, scarred. The body just kept on producing, the body kept on relieving through the skin, the infections that we were targeting that caused the lupus in the first place, getting it out of the body and it came out through the skin. No, she didn't touch something and get infected. She wasn't in some area of the world that got all of a sudden the body got infected on the skin. Her body was expressing the infection removal through the skin, just like the volcano eruption I described before. In August, I saw her for the next exam. Her lymphatic system, she had several different viruses. I won't go into extreme detail here, but she had several viruses like influenza. She had parvovirus, a rotavirus. She had the measles virus, St. Louis encephalitis virus. And she had some bacteria that were in her lymphatic system that were slowing down the lymph's ability to help the skin heal. Remedies we provided to get rid of those infections that were in her lymph. Her spleen had infection still with malaria and dengue fever virus. Remedies got rid of that as well. We gave her other supportive remedies to help her skin heal. And again, the skin did heal and she tells you in the video that she did nothing else but come here to get better. I saw her after that August of 18, I saw her in December of 2018. Her skin, urea plasma bacteria in the skin, yersinia bacteria with the skin. I found also that she had a stress from certain foods that were making her skin worse, certain things that she was drinking and certain foods she consumed actually made the skin worse. So she noticed that she was getting better with the skin, but until she ate something sweet or she drank something like a, an alcohol drink and she doesn't have alcohol problem, but when she drank something to try to relax because the skin was so irritated, it actually made the skin worse. Honey made the skin worse. Uh, so there were some things about her diet that we had to figure out and those foods like pastry and the alcohol and the honey were actually stressing the fascia underneath the skin and stressing her skin. And I found further that her pancreas was infected with the staph infection. Her liver was infected with staph and Yersinia bacteria. She took all those remedies for what I found in her. These remedies counteract the infections to help the body heal, to get rid of the infection. So. As we're cleaning up other stressed tissues in her body, making the lupus happen to stop the lupus, to be able to, I shouldn't say stop, to be able to help her body remove the causes of the lupus so that she can actually reverse it and get better on her own, which is what she wants. Because again, the immune suppressive medication, she has no choice. Either live with the lupus and live with the pain and only take the steroid and the painkillers, or, or, which is constantly making her toxic or get rid of what's causing it. And she's got family behind her backing her saying you've got to get rid of what's causing it 
And so while she went through a very tough period for a couple of years to get rid of these infections and the expressions on the skin, now the skin has healed. Now it's healed. Healed. Amazing. So she, again, could not take the immune suppressive medications because it caused her ulcers. So either she takes the immune suppressive medication, ulcers that made her didn't feel better with the joint pain, didn't stop the swelling, or she only takes the steroid and the painkillers and the anti-inflammatories constantly, but still living with the organisms in her. Now the organism's coming out and she's getting better because her prednisone level, when I first met her, she was on 20 milligrams a day. She's on five now. She's still on five. She's decreased the amount that she's using, which means the body's improving. I found when I saw her again in March of 2019, three months after that December visit, I found she had staph infection in her blood. I found staph infection in the blood cells. I found she still had more staph that was coming out of the body in her skin. I found her amygdala, uh, the fear, panic, anxiety part of the brain had staph and enterococcus bacteria. I found her tendons in her body had staph infection. The tendons had enterococcus bacteria and actinomyces bacteria. I found her blood had the enterococcus bacteria. I found her kidneys had the enterococcus bacteria. I found the parasitic infection from malaria. Parasitic infection from malaria. That'll make the body hurt. That'll make immune reactions take place that are seem to be unanswered by medicine and laboratories. I found the malaria in the kidneys and the malaria in the blood. She took remedies to get rid of those. And then I saw her come back to me in August of 2000. This is September of 2019. By August, her skin looked, it was like night and day. Like night and day. There was no cream. There was no medicine that she used. She says it right there. It was only treatment from me. Her skin, night and day. Now we could see that there were some darker spots like scars on the skin from everything that she went through uh, getting these out. But her skin is so much better. The rash, the purple, the horrible situation that happened on her skin is now gone. And that torment for her is over. And that journey of healing, that stage of healing is now gone. Now we're moving on to other things. But I found with her in this examination in August of 2019 that has further gotten her to this point that you saw in the video of 9 of 19, September of 19, her liver, she had the Zika virus in her liver, dengue virus in the liver, chikungunya virus in her liver, Colorado tick fever virus in her liver, Eastern equine encephalitis virus in her liver. Look, when the liver is sick, nothing in the body can be well. When the liver is infected with viruses and bacteria, and parasites and mold and fungus and chemicals in the liver, the body can't function well. You could definitely understand that. I mean, your liver's infected, digestion can't be well, the body can hurt, the neck can hurt, the chest can hurt, the abdomen can hurt. Blood pressure can go up from liver infections. So she had the Eastern equine encephalitis virus in the liver as well, tick-borne encephalitis virus in the liver. Another virus, two long words here, I'll say it a couple of times, lymphocytic, and I'll put it up on the screen here, lymphocytic, Choreomeningitis virus in the liver. She had another virus called human foamy virus in her liver. Her skin was infected with the human foamy virus and a small amount more of the staph infection we were going after again. Zika virus in the skin, parvo virus with her skin, the Everglades virus in the skin. Uh, and I found her, her blood had the Eastern equine encephalitis virus. Her blood had the Zika virus and the parvo virus, chikungunya virus and a virus known as California encephalitis virus in her blood. I found that her mesenchymal stem cells, all, she had Zika virus in her mesenchymal stem cells, Lassa virus in her stem cells, Pumala virus, and Hantavirus in her stem cells. She's now doing much better. The pain is not completely gone yet. The prednisone level is reduced from 20 milligrams a day to five milligrams a day. The rash is gone. Medicine could not help her because she could not take those immunosuppressive medications. I can't, I can't say that enough. She could not take the medication. Medicine could not do it for her because when they use those meds, it gave her ulcers. Understand, she had to, in order to try to get better, she had to step outside the box of the usual medical paradigm of thinking that it's just about the medications to cope with the disease. She had to because the drugs could not help her. They hurt her. So no, these, these, these infections coming out while they did cause her emotional uh, stress for a couple of years, uh, but her 
a reduction in prednisone is a positive. The reduction in the prednisone is a sign that the body's beginning to get better. And the complete elimination of the lesions, of the rash, the purple rash on the skin, is another sign that the body can heal without the medications. The body can heal when we're using the different kind of scientific method to be able to help the body remove infections and help the body start to repair tissues that have been diseased by these infections for who knows how many years she carried those in her. Again, lupus from 15 years ago was her first diagnosis. So I practice a very different method of being able to pinpoint and safely remove these different infections from the body. And there's proof again. I'm gonna show it to you again. Look at the before and after with her. It's really impressive. One of my proudest moments of helping somebody overcome a chronic illness and gluten-free diet and a dairy-free diet and not eating meat and only doing vegetables. And so she's trying different things. It didn't help her. All the diet changes did not help her. All the different supplements that she tried in the past did not help her. She tried. She tried. And now what we see is a positive change taking place for this woman in her life with my work. Okay. I really hope this helped you to realize that there is another way to help yourself get better. Watch my other videos on my, on my YouTube channel. You'll see other people overcoming some incredible conditions, rashes that they had before I ever met them, gone. Anxiety and depression and pain, gone. Uh, improvement in memory, improvement in brain function from this work that I'm offering. I went through postgraduate studies in neurology for several hundred hours, human brain dissection, neurochemistry, neuroimmunology, endocrinology, blood chemistry analysis, gastrointestinal disorder analysis, thyroid disease, developmental disorders of the brain, movement disorders. I had a mentor as a biochemist for three and a half years. I taught organic chemistry for three and a half years uh, when I went to school. I took alternative cancer uh, uh, treatment courses. I learned about teeth and the disease that teeth cause the body and assessing those teeth and helping people get rid of the disease causing agents from the mouth that are causing their disease. I've got a pretty good understanding about a lot of different systems, including the cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system. I run different laboratories on patients in the past. I tried that method, the leaky gut idea, the stool analysis for food sensitivities, blood analysis for food sensitivities, the hormone analysis, I was doing brain chemistry analysis, so it was supposed to be a real test, which I found out it wasn't uh, the hard way. People giving stool analysis to look for infections, breath analysis to look for infections in the stomach, stool analysis for infections in the stool. I'll tell you one thing, you run any of these tests, they can find if it's if your uh, brain has a virus in it. You can run a test and see that there's Epstein-Barr virus or influenza or herpes virus in the blood but you're not gonna know if it's in the brain, you're not gonna know if that's in the liver, you're not gonna know if it's in the heart, you won't know if it's on the thyroid. This method that I practice allows me to find where it is and help your body remove it from where it is so it stops the disease of the tissue. So it, it helps you clear out the tissue so the body can actually get stronger on its own and function better on its own. And that's the goal. The goal is to pinpoint and safely remove the hidden disease causing infections and toxins from the various tissues of your body so you can function better on your own because you're the only person in your body and your life that can actually m help your body fix itself, but with the right methods, that is. So yes, you'd have to come to my clinic to get involved with me to be able to get this examination that I'm offering. You can call my clinic at 954-370-3100. That's 954-370-3100. You can even email my clinic assistant. I'll put that up on the screen here, the email address. Some people come from other countries and don't call, they'll email first. They can make contact with my clinic assistant who can help you schedule the appointment. Uh, understand that you're gonna travel here. There's going to be about a two hour window in my schedule. The average visit is two to two and a half hours in my clinic. The average protocol is about two months to three months that people follow at home. And it's very simple to follow. I won't get into great, greater detail about the protocols now, but it is going to help you rid the infections like what I pointed out in this description about her, uh, about my findings with her. Help her overcome, again, recovery from this condition. Insurance doesn't cover this. They don't recognize this work. They do recognize all the tests you can 
can get, excuse me, they do recognize all the tests that you can get done in the hospital. They do recognize all the tests you can get done at your rheumatologist or your internist or your general doctor. They do recognize the medication. They may not cover all the fees that are uh, accompanied with those tests and the labs and the medications, but they do recognize most, if not all of it, or some of it. With my work, they don't recognize this. My job is to help you get better so you can function better on your own. And the sooner you get better, the better off you're gonna be, the happier you're gonna be, the better it is for me and the happier I am, and the better it is for everybody in the world because then we can show another proof, another proof, case study here of a person getting better under my care. Okay, so the sooner you're better, the better it is for you, me, and everybody out there. I am not in this to keep you coming for years to try to just hopefully get you better one day. I expect you to get well. I expect you to, to decrease uh, your symptoms. I expect you to even decrease the medications. Not at, not Maybe not immediately, maybe in time. I don't hope things are gonna turn out to be positive for you. I believe that they can. I expect them to through my experience and through my knowledge and understanding about science and the literature that I've studied over the years. And I hope it's gonna be fast for you. I really do. The sooner you're better, the better it is for everybody involved. The better, the better it is for everybody in the world. Because the sooner I could show that you've gotten better to another person out there under my, uh, who's looking for care, who's looking for answers, they can say, you know what, that's a second, that's a third, that's a fifth, that's a tenth person he's helped get well. So my goal is to get you better, help you get yourself better fast, all right? So again, you can call my clinic at 954-370-3100 or email my clinic assistant. I think you should like me on my Facebook page. I put up information there on a regular basis. You can follow me on Instagram and even subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell for notifications because then e uh, Google and YouTube can email you when I put up, put up a new video, okay? And scroll through some of the videos about lupus and other diseases. You're gonna see people getting better. Spend some time, look through the videos on my YouTube channel. Have the doubts in your mind that it can even be possible. Listen to the people describing their recovery. Listen to the people describing their improvements in their function, in their health. And, and and when there's, there, it's happening under my care, okay? Again, I hope it's gonna be fast. There's no way for me to know. Because I don't think that you know right now how many different infections or toxins are in your tissues that are making you so diseased. I doubt that has ever been discovered for you. So uh, we both hope it's gonna be fast, but it may take some time, okay? So thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful for you. And if you found it beneficial, please share it with someone. Hello, do you suffer with lupus, uh, uh, any autoimmune disease? My name is Dr. Lonnie Herman. I'm with a great patient. This is Ms. Uh, Ocasio. She lives in Massachusetts here in the United States. And uh, you were diagnosed with lupus about how many years ago? 16 years ago. Okay, and when you first uh, were diagnosed, it was due to pain in the body? It was due to inflammation of joints. It was very bad, right? Very bad. And it was very irritated to you, very, uh, was there itching? It was like a really bad sunburn with itching included. And right now what's there looks like on your skin where we have some dark spots. Was this prior to ever having the lupus diagnosis 16 years ago? Did you have those type of sunspots on your skin or is this only now right after these lesions have cleared and we have a bit of scarring that's there? After the, um, I guess after the rash is really what you see is scarring. Before the rash started, the only thing I had was just a little discoloration here, what you see here. It was a little less, and I actually, now that I think of it, I don't know if you can see a little bit of the rash on the eyebrow, mm -hmm. but before I started treatment with you, all I had was these little spots, mm -hmm. but that was all I had for rash. My main problem was the swelling of the joints and nothing. And so the they rash, the rash started after the treatments. Yeah, the so the, and we'll help everybody understand why the rash started after the treatment. And there's a specific reason, which we're going to get into in just a moment. So stay tuned. So you originally uh, diagnosed with lupus through blood test, and they found that you had uh, swollen joints and painful joints. And your original diagnosis before the lupus, they thought it was juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, right? Correct. And the treatment that they gave for the juvenile RA, did that make any difference? No, I felt absolutely no difference and my condition just seemed to be getting worse and after that then they realized through other testing they realized it was lupus 
Correct. And when you uh, when they started you on the medication uh, for the lupus for this autoimmune disease, because they're telling you that it's your body attacking itself, right? Correct. Yeah. So when they told you that, they gave you some immunosuppressive meds, and, and what else did they give you at the uh, originally? Originally, they gave me um, ibuprofen. They told me that ibupro a mix of ibuprofen, prednisone, and at the time, Salcept and Plaquenil. There was another medication. I can't remember. There have been many medications. They were basically experimenting with me until, according to them, they believed that the Salcept and the prednisone and the, the Salcept, prednisone, Plaquenil. According to them, the three combined would help, but they really didn't. They didn't help with the joint pain? Correct. It was supposed, according to the doctors, it would really it would reduce the inflammation caused by the lupus, which would reduce the pain. But I didn't feel any reduction of any pain. I just I felt the same. You felt the same. And so with those three meds, two immunosuppressives and a steroid, and maybe some ibuprofen from time to time. No, and, no. And, and did you so in addition to feeling no pain relief in the joints, we're making that very clear. There was no pain relief in the joints. Uh, you also told me that something else happened to your body as a side effect at, caused by the medication. What was that? That's right. Um, I believe it was in 2012. I, I thought I had a stomach bug, I had diarrhea and vomiting for over four days. On the fifth day when I went to the hospital, um, they discovered that I didn't have a stomach bug. What was going on, according to three doctors in the emergency room, it, I was suffering from some kind of stomach ulcer caused by either the cell sept or the Plaquenil is what they were discussing. I never got a complete answer, but I know that the doctors were saying that I guess I had a stomach ulcer and some kind of infection in my intestines caused by the cell sept or Plaquenil. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, well, they said that there was no actual medications for lupus. So when I heard that and ended up in the hospital suffering, I said, no more. I'm not taking those meds because obviously they're hurting me after so many years. And so we know that immunosuppressive medications, what they do is they suppress the immune system. And so I'm going to make a point right now uh, that the immune system's job is to attack infections that are in the body and help you rid those infections. Now, I believe that autoimmune, and this is from my research, postgraduate in neuroimmunology, and I was taught by one of the world's most recognized immunologists who's over 40 years in the industry. Uh, he had pointed out through dozens and dozens of lab papers that uh, the scientists around the world who were not funded by drug companies proved that there were different infections, viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungus, and or mold that are in tissues that make people have these inflammatory uh, responses. Uh, situations and diseases, whether it's lupus or, uh, or, or rheumatoid arthritis or Hashimoto's thyroid disease, and, and there's more to that. So when we can find these different infections and toxins and get them out of the body with a safe and effective method, then we can rid the inflammatory mechanism that's going on with the, the cause of the inflammation, the cause of the autoimmune disease. So with you, you had you stopped those meds because a they found that you had uh, you had ulcer and b they realized that the that if there was infection which they couldn't detect through their testing in the hospital but they said that if there's infection it was caused by you taking the immune suppressive med because you're actually stopping the immune system from finding the infection and you still had no relief of joint pain zero so you stopped taking those meds and then uh, you can't, started coming to me and. Let's just fast forward uh, to about two and a half years ago. So when I found, and we're going to go back and reflect here, I'm going to put a picture up on the screen of how bad the rash became. But when you started taking the remedies to pinpoint, because there was maybe 20 or 30 different infections that I found in your stem cells where the blood is made in your bone marrow. When you started taking those remedies, and the purpose of the remedy is to help the body get rid of the infection, and the infection, I'm telling this to other people, you already know this, what you're coming to me for, is to get the infection, to get the body to expel the infection some way. So one way that we can expel ex infections from the body is through our stool. We can expel infections through the urinary tract. We can vomit out infection, just like somebody who gets what we call food poisoning. We throw up to get, because the, bus, the, the brain and the stomach know, get rid of something that's harming us in the stomach. It's not poison that's in the food, it's infection in the food, like a parasite or so on that upset the stomach. We can have infections leave through our respiratory system and we can have infections leave through our skin. So what happened with Mesocasio when we started, she started taking these remedies I provided her, 
the body started getting rid of those infections that were in her bone marrow that caused a lot of the pain in the body and caused the autoimmune disease down to the DNA level. It started coming out through her skin. So the rash presentation you see in that video that she uh, generously shared with, with me for us, for everybody to learn about this, it started coming out through her skin and that lasted for you and it got worse and worse and worse and it went on for about how long? It's been two years, but I think it's over now. Yeah. So two years. Well, well, let's say when you say you think it's over now, how long, how, how many months have you been with your skin looking like this now, which is a huge improvement from what it was. So, right. We can admit to that. It's a huge improvement to what it was. Definitely. It Definitely. Feels better. It, looks better. it looks a lot better. So how long has it been this way with your skin as opposed to with the rash that was there before? It has now been a year since the last time I had some kind of skin flare. Okay, so a year. So we hope it's over. So only because you still, over. well, because you know what we're still going after. Is that what you said? Because you know the infections we're still finding. Exactly. You know, I'm sure the remedies might pull something out that's yeah. lingering around. So it might pull it out of the skin, but maybe you'll just pee it out or poop it out or something else. So uh, let me ask you um, your medication you were on when you first came to me, you were still taking prednisone. And how many milligrams a day? And there was no sulceptin, no plaquenil. No. Right. So you were on how much prednisone uh, when we started uh, uh, to do this, these protocols to get rid of these infections? How much prednisone were you on a day? When I first started with you, I was on 20 milligrams. And how much are you on now? Today, I'm on five milligrams. And how long have you been on five milligrams? I have been on five milligrams for roughly a year now. Now, the, the reason for the steroid, the prednisone, is to decrease inflammation in the body, right? Yeah. And so we know that the infections were coming out of your skin because of the remedies that you were taking to get rid of it that way. And you went to uh, the hospital where they saw the skin. And what did they say when they saw that? Well, because they say that it's because I'm not on Plaquenil, mm -hmm. but um, they were just asking questions. What did I eat? Asking about the flare, lupus flare, but they really don't treat it. They did give me some creams, momentazone, I believe it was called. Um, it really didn't help. They were steroidal creams, and I just didn't really want to use them because I felt absolutely no relief. No relief. And then the rheumatologist also you had seen uh, in private practice. And what did that doctor say? She thought you needed Plaquenil. She still insists that I take Plaquenil, and she wants me to get back on those medications because she insists that my skin is like this because of the lack of uh, Plaquenil. No, you refuse. Why do you refuse? I refuse because I've been on those medications for so many years and suffered so much. And why put another drug in my body? That's not helping. Yeah. And so you suffer so much because it caused ulcers. Absolutely. And you still have the joint pain. So it, it, while it caused you other suffering, but it didn't help you relieve the symptoms that it was supposed to be used for. Right. So um, right. and now you're down to five of the of the prednisone and your uh, skin. The point I'm going to make is your skin has cleared up so much. So uh, impressive the difference from then till now mm -hmm. your skin is cleared up uh, without increasing the prednisone correct your skin is cleared up without taking uh, uh any kind of an, uh, immune suppressive medications correct right right and it's going to be even better now the skin is going to be even better than where it is it might take another few months for that to get even better to a better complexion but we're, we're in a huge difference so again no immune suppressive medications to get rid of those uh, those ulcers that appeared on the skin or those those skin scars and rash, that whole terrible purplish looking appearance. Uh, uh, and no increase in prednisone and no other medication. And there was no topical ointments that would take it away. And it was the body had to do its own healing. The aggravations that occurred, the body was going through a healing process and it cleared up. Mm -hmm. but how much better do you think when you look in the mirror now and other people around you, your family and friends see you, and meet with you and hang out with you. What is their expression compared to what it was a year or a year and a half ago? What do they a think? Lot, a lot better. I mean, when I see family members that I don't, I don't go out much anymore. But when I do go, everyone's impressed because they did see what I was looking like before, and it was awful. I mean, everyone would cringe when they looked at me because it just looked awful, and. Everyone feels bad because they're like, oh, poor girl, you know, how are you feeling? Everyone wants to help, but no one can help. So when they see me now, they're they're like, oh, you look so much better. How are you feeling? You must be fine. And it's great to hear that. But honestly, I'm not 100 percent. I'd like to feel as great as I look to them. But mm -hmm. I know that we're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. So uh, so, um, you know, but I, I appreciate you letting me share this with everybody out there. 
uh, and your and I really appreciate your strength of what you you being a strong person to go through what you went through. Um, I appreciate you being so strong and, and sticking with us and understanding. And I appreciate you uh, letting me share these images that you uh, took from me to, to share this with everybody. And we're looking forward to even more improvement for you. Thanks. You got it. Anything else that you want to say at all before I cut off the recording? If there's anyone else suffering something like what I'm suffering, just hang in there because you know what? This too shall pass and I'm going to make it. Yeah. I believe it. Thank you. And, yeah, you're welcome. But you, I, I don't think it would just be making it by just going on a gluten free diet. Oh, no. no. This, you got to put a lot of work. It's a, put that a lot of work. It's been a lot of work and dedication for you, right? Absolutely. What if a gluten-free diet doesn't do it, a dairy-free diet doesn't do it, taking more of the immune suppressor medications couldn't do it for you, meditating couldn't do it for you, taking a vacation couldn't do it for you, right? It's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of work, yeah. It's been a lot of work. I appreciate you.